cool. Um, so I guess what I'm going to be talking about isn't necessarily um, revolutionary by any means, but I feel like there's a lot of misinformation about SVG sprites and uh, how they're, I, I guess, used around the internet and what, how they could be useful. What are we doing here? There we go. That's me. Um, cool. So right now there's a lot of problems with like image sprites and icon fonts and things rendering, and they're slightly um, sort of a pain to, to set up, and there's a lot of fragmentation across how uh, browsers render them. So um, both have sizing issues in certain browsers and edge cases. Both are troublesome to position correctly, especially if you're using like uh, custom icon fonts, and uh, you sort of have like um, you, you know you have to I guess re-render your icon font every time if you have a positioning issue or something like that. Maybe you should just get better at rendering the icon fonts, but I don't know. I've always found that to be an issue for me. Um, and anti-aliasing is always different between browsers, especially when you hit mobile devices and Android. Um, I found that to be quite a big issue. So what are SVG sprites? So it's pretty simple. An SVG sprite is just a single SVG file that contains data from, multi, uh, from multiple SVG graphics. Um, they're convenient because they serve with one HTTP request. They are simple to position, um, allow you to style them with CSS. They're easy to add to your workflow, um, and it's really easy to create fallbacks for them. In fact, I think there's a lot of grunt and gulp ta tasks that help you do this. So what does a SVG sprite look like? Um, so an SVG sprite kind of uh, looks like this. It's basically an SVG uh, that's printed out. Um, there's a few key things that are different here. Uh, first off, we're using the symbol tag for each sprite instead of the G tag. And this, the G tag is, um, stands for group, and it uh, typically comes from a, um, like an uh, um, like image rendering program that would group together paths or elements. So in Illustrator, when you have uh, items that are grouped together, it would surround those with a G tag when it's exported. Uh, in replacing that with the symbol tag, the symbol tag is actually able to create its own view box that's separate. So this way you can set separate view box elements um, for each sprite. So if a different image is a different size, you can set that here uh, in the view box, which is kind of nice. Um, also with the symbol tag, it allows you to set a title and description. I don't have that here, but um, you can use a title tag and a description tag that works well with uh, accessibility. Um, so with the symbol tags, it's easier to make them responsive, obviously, because you can set your view box within here, and then the um, sprite can readjust uh, from there. Um, cool, so creating an SVG sprite. Um, you can copy and paste from individual, individual SVG files. Uh, there's a few grunt and gulp tasks that do it for you. Uh, grunt SVG store will create them for you from a folder of um, SVG files. Grunt icon uh, will create ping uh, fallbacks for your SVG files. And I found this one recently, uh, Dr. SVG Sprites, which compiles a folder for you and then creates a ping sprite sheet also, which seems pretty convenient. It didn't have a lot of uh, attention. It was a GitHub repo that I found. Um, I'll post a link to the slide so you guys can click on these links. Um, and that seemed kind of interesting. I'm playing around with it with a little bit. I think it needs a little bit more bedding, but um, yeah. There's also a few services that make it really easy to do. Uh, Fantastic, Akamu, and Fontello will print out um, SVG sprites for you, um, which is pretty nice. And they even allow you to upload your own. Uh, so using an SVG sprite. So this is a basic HTML page. Um, so here at the top, we're defining the uh, sprite, I guess, the SVG. So there's our two um, symbols, and then down here, uh, in our page, we're, allowed, we're able to use the SVG use tag to call the sprite. So there's the sprite up there. We're calling ID of icon one, and we're saying use link href icon one. This can also work with external um, uh, files, which is kind of nice. Um, the initial SVG has to be called at the beginning of the document. Um, I believe there's an, a funny Chrome bug right now that makes it not possible to call in the footer, but I believe that's being fixed in Chrome 37, I saw. I don't know. I'm not sure about that. Um, so uh, SVG um, use tags calls the width, height, and view box that it's set, like I said. Um, <coughs> elements that render inside the use tag is tr are treated as shadow DOM. Is that correct? Yeah, I 
you get Give me a. <laughs> All right. I talked Dom I talked Dominic something. Um, it uh, yeah. Fun fact: uh, SVGs was used in the RCC specification or to like first implement Shadow DOM like over a decade ago. It showed up in 2003, I think. It was interesting. I like started reading over this spec just to see what they were trying to do here, and uh, it was very ambitious. They were like sort of creating a like a they were like creating a rendering engine inside of a rendering engine, and it just didn't work, and so that's why it <laughs> kind of disappeared. I think <laughs> I. Yeah, not, not too sure. Uh, requires a fallback to work in IE, but basically what you'll do to make the fallback happen in IE is replace SVG news with an object tag, which will re-render it twice, but um, I, I, I don't know. Um, I feel like the trade-off is worth it. Um, um, yeah, uh, it doesn't work in all the way up to IE 11, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, so here we have a demo. Um, so essentially, here's our HTML page with our symbol tags here, uh, calling the SVG sprite down here. So I have two different sprites. I have icon one and icon two. So if I change this to icon two, I'll get the other uh, SVG sprite. So it's pretty cool. And then uh, there's a few other things we can do. You can um, add styling to. Um, the uh, individual sprites, so you can style them each differently, which is kind of cool. So I think that's pretty neat that you can style them separately. Um, make it easier. Uh, inside your SVG file, there's also a defs tag, which is your define tag. Um, it allows you to define an element without rendering it. Um, so this can be used to store anything, essentially. So it can store patterns, gradients, or masks. Um, and it's great for creating like sort of minimal templates for things that you want to reuse within your SVG sprites. This is especially helpful if you're handcrafting your SVGs or making it in a program like Inkscape or Illustrator. Um, so the def tag looks like this, essentially. Um, so we're inside of our def tag, we're um, basically establishing a linear gradient here. Uh, it just starts at white, ends at black. And it's printing out into a circle here. And so our fill is given the URL of this gradient. So within our SVG file, we can reference things. It's sort of like making SAS and Nixons. You know how those work? Inside of a uh, SVG file. So it's pretty convenient the way you can manipulate these and sort of set it up. Can you reference that in a different SVG element? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, you can. Cool. It's That's great. Quirky. Okay. <laughs> yeah, imagine if you can reference it from externally, it would be similar. Is that right? Or? It, it's just like a document ID. Oh, okay. It's weird because it's technically a different documented SVG space. You'd have to change this URL value, I imagine? Or no? Uh, no, if you put a closed SVG and open SVG before the circle. Okay. Yeah, if you close it after the text, then we open it. Oh, okay, I see. Great. Uh, demo. So, essentially, um, that's this here. I'm doing it with a different object here. This is a uh, pattern that's just being created with the path that's being defined, and it's being printed out into a rectangle here. So here is our result. Um, do I no longer have internet? I think I have the, uh, here we go. So here's our result here. That's the same file, sorry about that. Can everyone see that? Okay, how that kind of works. So you can just have a basic rectangle with a width and height of 200 and fill it with the pattern that you referenced here. Um, yeah, so I believe that is uh, all. Does anyone have any questions on how to implement these? Or, uh, yeah. Is it possible to use a whole different SVG to reference a whole different SVG? Uh, document instead of the, uh, sorry, what was the first example of the first tag that you're using to group them? Uh, yeah, where was that back? The symbol tag, yeah, sorry. So are you talking about separate files or separate SVG tags? Separate SVG tags, yeah. Uh, this one here? Yeah. Probably, it sounds like from what you were saying earlier, the IDs are global across the HTML file, right? Yeah, I 
believe they should be, so you can reference them from multiple documents. Uh -huh. right, I don't know. Any other questions? Yeah, over here. Uh, the fallback works in IE11, but the, this SVG used does not work in IE11. It, it falls back to the object tag. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No? That's all? All right, cool.